What's going on guys and welcome to episode 28 of Operation Premiership now with Coventry City and we are now starting our fourth season in the Championship. As you can see we had our first bit of uh, a downward turn on the old uh, league graph last season but we'll be hoping to see a, an upturn in that and the season has started well so I'll get straight on to the transfers now to let you see what we did in the summer. <clears throat> so we started off with uh, the. I'll start with the outs. Sean White, uh, he's a youth prospect, went out on loan to TNS. Scott Carn, he's a, a good youth prospect who's gone on loan to Bournemouth in League One, so that shows what sort of a standard he's at at 18 years old. Um, one out that I didn't want to let go, Joaquin Reno. I didn't realise he had a minimum fee release clause in his contract, and Everton took that option and paid 2.3 million for him um, it's a good profit of 2 million pounds uh, on a one season deal he didn't have an average rate in over 7 so it wasn't too great but we were down the bottom of the table but I, didn't, I did want to keep him but he's taken the option to go to the premiership and we got a bit of money for him so that's alright we then uh, let Dave McGoldrick go on a free, Nick Proschwitz left on a free, he's gone back to Germany now, Shane Fagan, the backup keeper, he's gone on a free, so it's Lewis Rankin, Lewis Garner, Jordan Forrester, um, they've all left on free transfers, Chris Eagles was also released, he went to Sheffield United, uh, I got rid of Ben Clappison in the end, I offered him out on a free and Chester took the option to take him. David Jackson's gone out on loan to Hereford. He needs to, like I said it last season, does need to improve uh, this time if he's going to stay. Sebastian Dietrich, I said it last season, it was going to be his last year unless he, but there was a major improvement. There wasn't, so I offered him out. Nobody would pay any money for him, so just to get him out of the club, I just offered him out on a free transfer. It wasn't too much. We signed him on a free anyway, so it's not too bad. Uh, Denis Cheryshev um, wanted first team football last season, and he asked me. Uh, for it, I said I'd let him go at the end of the season. He's a he's an average player, but he's done nothing special really in the couple of years he was here. Um, 6.93 and 6.8 average rate. And he fell out of uh, the first team a bit last season with Joaquin Reno coming in, and he's gone to Recreativo for 350,000 um, pounds. I had the option to get uh, let him go to Huddersfield, but they're now in our division. I didn't want him in our division. So I let him go, and it's seven grand a week off the wage budget, so that's pretty good as well. And then the rest are all just loans out, I think, um, just to feeder clubs. Cillian Smith's gone to Farnborough to aid his progression. John warmgore has gone to Farnborough as well. Arkadius Stanislavski's gone to Nuneaton. Ali Reza has gone to Nuneaton. Thomas Button to Nuneaton. Corey Lloyd to Leighton Orient. Jordan Willis to Aldershot, Darren McQueen to Wickham, Franco Scalat has gone to Northampton, Gwyn Hughes has gone to Bristol Rovers, Paul Oates has gone to Leighton Orient. Now Paul Oates is looking like a really, really good player now. He needs to improve his tackling a bit, but other than that, fantastic six foot four central defender. Really, really good. He's getting a quality average rating down in League Two. And he has just made his first appearance for Wales, the senior side, after 17 under 21 appearances. And Due to that, he are now on his favoured personnel, but he looks like a really, really good prospect, so we'll be hoping to bring him through. Uh, Philip Sly went to Stockport. Filippo Clementini went to Walsall. He kicked up a massive fuss about first-team football, um, and I eventually let him go out on loan. I said I wanted to keep him and things. He just didn't want to have any of it. He's already been sent off for them, so he's got a bit of a temperament, and I may not keep him past the end of the season. And Ivor Lawton's gone on loan to Barnet. <clears throat> so that's all the outs done. Get on to the ins. And the first man in, Owain Owen, from Bangor City. He's a, a prospect at 15 years old. He's got some really good physical stats already. Maybe the stamina needs to be improved on. But I thought he could work on these stats while he was here. And maybe we might just be able to get something out of him, whether it's just selling him on once he's had the development and making a bit of a profit. We'll wait and see how he gets on. Next guy in was Dave Craven, for also from Bangor City on a free. Um, and this guy's got a fantastic report coming with him. He's 16 year old, 16 years old, and a striker. He's got already got nine finishing, nine composure, which at that age isn't too bad. Uh, he's got a bit of pace about him, good penalty taking, good off the ball, and good flair. 
So we'll see how he how he develops. But according to my report, he's going to be a Premiership striker in the future. At the moment, he's at Blue Square Bet Premier level, but he's sitting in the reserves. I may actually stick him in the under 18s. Didn't realise he was in the reserves, and that will where he'll get some decent football with uh, players of his own age. Jim State, I bought in on a free transfer. He's uh, an 18 year old regen uh, coming from Manchester United through their academy. He looks like a decent midfielder, 12 passing, um, 11 marking, more of a defensive midfielder. Bit of pace, good stamina though, good fitness, and a three and a half star report. So we'll see how he gets on. Again, he's young. He's a young player on a youth contract, so he's not costing too much to be here. And we'll see how he develops. Next in was Ali Reza Usta, who's a Turkish right back. He's gone out on loan to Nuneaton for the season to get some first team football. And as you can see, this guy's got some good stats in the key areas for a defender. Uh, the report coming with him says he's a Premier Division right back in the future. At the moment, he's League Two. I'd probably agree with that. And if he can get some decent football under his belt, I think he can definitely progress to that sort of a standard. Next in was Ernest Ebwelli. He's a German striker, six foot two, 15 finishing, 16 heading, 13 composure, good physical stats, 16 jumping as well. Um, and he's got some good teamwork and work rate. He had one game at the start of the season, only picked up a 5.9 average rating. Um, he has been dropped since. At the moment, it's League One ability, according to the recommend the report, but a Premier Division striker in the future. So we'll have to see how he develops. But at the moment, he's not getting a look in, and you'll see why in a minute. Next in was Cesar Fornoni. This was a deal done by my director of football. He's a left winger or attacking mid centre uh, from Boca Juniors, Argentinian creative player, and his stats are good. He's 19 years old. He's definitely going to develop, and hopefully he can develop while he's here. His report says that at the moment he's a good player for League One. I'd say he's doing all right. He's not the best player that we've got, um, and he will no by no means have a first team spot automatically every week. But so far he's been doing pretty well. And the next guy is Francois Torre, who's a good midfielder who can play anywhere across the midfield. He's got fantastic pace, good technique. He's a great free kick taker as well. Needs to work on his passing a bit though, but he can develop while he's here. Again, he's a young player who's got League One ability at the moment, but a Premier Division in the future. As you can see, I'm trying to build youth players to be able to come through and challenge for the first team places in the next couple of years. Sean Scannell was the next guy in. Um, I thought this guy was a really good sign on a free transfer. He's just a, a good squad player, uh, can come in and do a job when needed to. Decent work rate and teamwork, fantastic pace and acceleration, good finishing on him. Uh, I'm playing him more as a winger than a striker though, because I've only, I'm only playing with one striker. But when he gets the chance, he may play up front. But he's on a small wage as well, only four grand a week isn't too bad. So that's a good signing as well. Next in was Pericles Ribeiro, he's a French goalkeeper and he's got some good stats in uh, in the goalkeeping area. He is just a backup at the moment to Alex McCarthy, he's played two games, one in the league, one in the cup and he's got a decent average rating from both of them. Uh, like I said, he's just going to be here to develop uh, under the as an understudy to Alex McCarthy he's got league one potential uh, ability at the moment but potential to be a Premier Division goalkeeper so that's good to see again next in was Christophe Jean who's a right back centre back defensive midfield right mid centre mid he's just a very versatile player he's not got a great report with him but his stats are pretty decent and his versatility made me want him he's a good worker um, and I think he can develop he's, he is 21 so He's not going to develop massively, but I'm hoping that he can get uh, his stats up a little bit while he's here. As you can see, there's a couple going up, which is good to see. And uh, hopefully he can challenge for a first-team place this season, and I'll try and give him a few games while he's here. And the last guy in was just before the start of the season, and it was Arthuro. Now, you look at him, you think 34 years old. He was 33 when I signed him. He's now 34. He's just turned 34. £3,800 a week isn't too bad. 15 finishing, 13 composure. He's not got pace on him, but he's still got great natural fitness and great strength and good stamina as well. 
which means that he's not going to get too tired in the games and it's not proving the case at the moment 17 heading as well and if you look at this record 6 in 6 and 5 in 4 league games he's been absolutely on fire his 2.5 star report doesn't do him any favours whatsoever he's far better than that and I'll show you his form hit quickly here he came in after missing the first league game he was an unused substitute against Brighton scored one three one one so he's scoring goals and that's good to see as well so we'll get straight on to the fixtures now let you know how we got on <clears throat> and in pre-season we did alright we were unbeaten throughout pre-season we uh, started off with a 5-1 win away at Bristol Rovers Ignacy Mikwell, Mayha, Hetherington, Testrut and Warm Gore on the score sheet uh, in a good win for us we then went to Huddersfield in the same league as us and drew 1-1 Scott Dan getting the only goal of the game for ourselves we then welcomed Club Brews from Belgium for a home friendly and we drew 1-1 with them as well John Warm Gore on the score sheet again showing his progression but he's gone out to get some first team football this season next up was Chelmsford City at home and Ronnie Wubshet was on the score sheet in a 1-0 victory and last but not least was a disappointing 1-1 draw away at Farnborough Cesar Fornoni with the only goal for us in that game so that was a decent pre-season and I was quite optimistic going into the first game of the season against Brighton but unfortunately we couldn't do anything in it it was a poor game, poor performance by the lads um, not too bad statistically but the possession we gave too much away and they just basically had two counter attacks when Adam Lafondra was there and his pace took him away from us and his finishing was second to none and two goals from him 2-0 and Brighton beat us on the first day but we bounced back really really well I made a few changes but not too many because uh, last season when I changed the whole outfield we went out to League 2 side so this time I didn't make too many changes but uh, we won 3-1 really good performance really dominated the game uh, Christoph Testrot got us on the score sheet after 20 minutes with a fantastic free kick we went 2-0 up through our thorough 5 minutes into the second half but they equalised, uh, got one back just 5 minutes later to make it 2-1 and then just before the end of the game Testro scored his second free kick of the game in the 89th minute and that's why he's scoring because he's got 16 free kick taken really good set piece taker so he's going to be really good and he's getting some first team football so he's improving as he does and a good 3-1 win got us through to the next round uh, we then went back to league action and played Peterborough away both of us had lost our first game of the season but Peterborough have done well recently in the championship and a 1-0 win away at their place was a good result in my eyes Bebe after 9 minutes with the only goal of the game it was a very even game possession wise stats wise there was only one shot in it on target wise they had more shots than us but we managed to get the win and it was a really good result with a clean sheet as well we then played our bogey team Swindon at home and this time we beat them 3-1 Arthuro, that man with the first half hat trick, he scored after six minutes to give us the lead. Razak equalised after 24, but then two more after 36 and 43 gave us an emphatic 3 1 win. And despite them having more possession, we, just, we created far more chances and were just very good at finishing them on the day. And this guy's turned out to be a lethal man up front. We then played Bristol City away and a 1-1 draw was a little disappointing in the way that their goal came about. Robert Rowan scored after 37 for them. He went down the right hand side. He was almost on the touchline and he just smashed it into the box and it was going straight towards goal. Alex McCarthy tried to catch it and dropped it into his own net uh, to give them the lead. Arthur Rowe did grab the equaliser just before half time to get us back on level terms. And as you can see, we slightly edged the stats and the possession, possibly uh, uh, deserved to get maybe another goal, but on the day our finishing wasn't quite up to scratch to get that win. Otherwise, it would have been a very, very good start to the season. We then went to Norwich for a very difficult Capital One Cup second round tie. And although they dominated us, we defended resolutely throughout the game. And it wasn't until 62 minutes when they eventually broke the deadlock through Gerard Broaders to give them the lead I did attack towards the end but we just couldn't find a way through couldn't create much they were very good on the day with Norwich and they fully deserved their place in the third round and we then played Wigan in back to league action away from home and lost 2-1 Dicko gave them the lead after 59 minutes 
we equalised four minutes later through our Thoreau and I thought we were going to earn a draw as we were closing in the closing stages of the game we were holding on but unfortunately Craig Noon smashed one in from the edge of the box to make it 2-1 to Wigan and they probably just about edged it on the day and deserved the win but uh, I was disappointed in the manner that we lost it so late on so that does bring you up to date on the fixtures um, I'll show you the league table quickly and we sit in 12th place comfortable on 7 points we're only a couple of points off 4th uh, place so there's not much separating us at the moment but the, then again we are only 5 points off the relegation zone so we can't get too much ahead of steam at the moment but hopefully we can just push on and make this a good season in the championship and get in towards the playoff area we're putting some good performances against teams up there at the moment we put in a good performance against Wigan we played Brighton, we got beat though we beat Swindon um, so we're doing alright, Bristol City there we drew with them so we're doing well this season, scoring goals as well which is the main thing and making sure that we don't concede too many which we haven't done either so we get straight on to today's live comp <clears throat> as I promised it is at home to Aston Villa they've got a uh, a very decent side considering they've just been relegated from the Premiership so McCarthy in goal for us Christie, Wooten, Dan and Sabai at the back Fleck, Davis, Newadomski in midfield with Bebe and Scannell on the wings and up front is Arturo for Aston Villa it's Guzan in goal Kelly, Callas, Blind and Bitolo at the back Bannon, Isco, Janino and Thomas Ince in midfield He's going to be a man that we've got to watch out with Donnelly and Sabitza up front. Just going to have a look at who they've got on the bench to see if they've got anyone dangerous to bring off. Um, there's no one I know apart from Charles and Zogbia could be pretty dangerous. He's got some good pace and he's only 30 years old as well. It seems like he's been around for ages. But that certainly isn't the case. So I'm not going to go too defensive with this one. and I'm going to try and tell them they can win this one because it's a big derby match we've got to we've got to go out there and uh, and get a result really for the fans especially so we'll put it into control and just set the match engine up and we'll start the game so it's going to be Aston Villa to kick off and it's Donnelly to Sabitza and Callas Kelly back to Guzan is it going to be a pointless highlight to start the game yes it is and Sean Scannell's picked up a knock in the first minute which isn't good but we've got the ball here is Davis and it's new Adomski Davis is giving it away to Bitolo forward Dan's tackled Sabitza into Donnelly Donnelly and he's missed it he was one on one and Villa should have taken the lead there but he missed he's put it wide and it's still no nil Fleck into the box it's cleared away though by Bannon and Donnelly's got it takes it towards the country half Blind forward to Thomas Ince Ince into the box cross it and Sabitz has put Villa in front and they are 1-0 up in the local derby and it's a poor start by the guys we've had both highlights have started with us having the ball and we've just given the ball away needlessly and very very just very very cheaply giving the ball away and it's not much happened since the goal as we're getting close to half time now so five minutes to go till half time it's still 1-0 to Villa we've got a throw in here is Davis Christie and Christie to Fleck and now we've got a chance to go forward it's Davis to Arturo Davis new Adomski forward Bebe loses it Davis and it's cleared away, Fleck gets it out wide to Scannell and Scannell in towards the box and shoots and it's a great save by Guzan and it's still 1-0, Fleck into the box, it's cleared, it's Scannell and it's wide and that's pleasing to see us having an attempt on goal and giving, us, giving ourselves a chance going into the second half they're telling me it hasn't been good enough but the bad news is that we've got two injuries and it's our two wingers Bebe and Scannell both injured so I'm wondering how I'm going to change them I'm going to bring Scannell off first I'm going to bring Testro on for him 
And then should I need to bring Bebe off, I'll probably bring him off for for Noni, or I might start training Wubshet as a winger. I don't know yet. I'll I'll think about that, but Bebe can stay on for now. We'll see how we go in the second half. <coughs> so it's going to kick off with ourselves, and it's Fleck, Wooten, Christie, and it's a pointless first half, uh, first highlight of the second half. If we can get a goal, I'd be pleased with a draw. It would keep us in the top half as it stands. And it's Guzan with a free kick for Villa, up towards Sabitza, Christie to Dan, McCarthy now, out wide to Christie. Can we get the ball forward? It's Bebe. And Bebe under pressure back to Christie. And long ball forward straight to Bitolo. He heads it back to Guzan. And Guzan to Dawson. Guzan again clears it. Isco brings it down. And down the right hand side he comes. He cuts inside. Crossed it in. Sabitza and it's 2 0. And it's shocking defending. I don't know what Wooten was doing there pulling away from Sabitza. He's just left him on his own in the box. And that's a shocking bit of defending by the boys. As he's he's come down the wing, there's no challenge either. And it's just going to force us to have to go for this now. We're going to have to take every every option, every chance we've got if we're going to get into this game. It's Wooten picks up a yellow card. 20 minutes to go now, nothing's happening and Zogby is now on which is going to make our job 10 times harder so I'm going to bring Fornoni on for uh, Bebe and Davis is going to have to come off because I'm going to have to put two up front now and it eventually works me pick him up So we'll put him as a poacher. We'll get Wub shit on. And that'll have to do. It's the last roll of the dice for us. Throw more men forward. Try and get this try and get at least the goal to get back into it. So a quarter of an hour left to change it. Kelly with the free kick to Isco. Isco to Blind. And now Kier. And Sabitz are with them two goals today. Bitolo, Ince, down the left hand side, crossed it in, Wooten headed away, Fleck challenges for it, it's gone to Ince, Ince crossed it in again, and Zogby has fought for it, it's a battle, and it's a goal, Kier's finished it off for Villa, it's 3-0, and it's a shocking performance in a big derby game that means a lot to the fans, <laughs> as they have another chance, and they've just battered us today, we've been so shocking, Especially in the defensive area. We've hardly had a chance going forward as Wubshet heads it for Noni gives it away cheaply again. We're just not keeping hold of the possession at all. And Blin now on the left hand side into Isco. Kier. Kier to Sabitza and it's saved and Sabai clears it away. And Newadomsky's tackled him, it's forward, it's Arthuro, Wubshet and Newadomsky can hold on to it. So throwing Testra into the box and it's given away again. And what's Dan done? He's missed it completely. And Sabitza has almost finished it off. It's a good save by McCarthy. I feel sorry for McCarthy having sort of had this poor defence in front of him all day. As we come towards the end of the game, it's Wubshet, it's Testra. Is it going to be another moment of lack of keeping the ball? No. Flex going to score, but he's. When we eventually do score, it's disallowed for offside, and it's it's just getting laughable now. This performance is really one of the worst performances I've seen my commentary team do since I started the series. As Kier has made it 4-0 in added time, and I can tell you now, there's going to be one hell of a backlash by the commentary fans after this game. It's been a shocking performance in a match that means so much to them. It's the first time they've played Villa since the relegation from the Premiership. And it's a shocking performance. So, I'm going to let them absolutely have it. It's been terrible. And we've lost 4-0 in a live comp. Really not what I wanted to do. I didn't ever want to do it, but... 
we're going to have to try and turn this around and get the team's confidence back because look at how quickly we are down the table we're straight down to 17th before we played Villa we were uh, before we played Wigan sorry we were 8th and on the verge of the playoffs and now we're struggling and we're slipping down the table so guys that's going to be an end to the uh, episode please do give it a like if you've uh, enjoyed the episode and subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you soon for episode 29 thanks a lot for joining me guys I'll see you later bye